and there were two people on top of it. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! I made the decision to travel abroad to England for a semester on impulse. You stupid Americans, you! Bro, calm down there. Whoa, 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 check out this dude! Let's see, Jessica, Jessica, here you are. Looks like you've been assigned to work as a maid. There will be seven of us at the moment, well, who boards here regularly? And a couple of extra rooms for overnights or short-term lets. Oh, the door flies open. Um, who's this? Can we date her? <laughs> hey, internet, it's Jessica, and welcome back to England Exchange. So, I actually went over to a bunch of websites to kind of look at, like, what romance are for who, because there are certain characters that are straight, so only the male MC can date them, or only the female MC can date them. So, let's continue. I had barely woken up when I heard a hard knocking at my door. You in there, get the hell up! I flipped out on my bed and ran to the door, completely unaware of where I was or what I was doing. A man was there, glaring at me. You've got a report for work today, you know that? Yes? I blinked at him. I'm James, I own this place, I run this program, that makes me your boss. I have to give him a British accent then, right? Because he's from the UK, Oh damn it! You're going to be a maid near a hotel! <laughs> nearby hotel! Find Angelo and make sure you go together! Um... Assy? Is it Azzy or Assy? I, I don't know how to say that name. That's another character. Assy will always be working with you. Wait, you mean I'm not gonna clean rooms for the hostel? Ha! Cleaning rooms for the hostel! What do you think I am, a millionaire? Hell no! I'll look into if something major happens, but until then, you're managing yourself here. If something goes wrong, fix it yourself! You get, you get yourself over that fancy hotel. Owner's name is Francesca. Tougher than she looks. Don't make her mad. Don't cause any trouble, understand? We don't need reasons for people to never hire you lot again. You do that and the entire program will be shut down. Not only will you be out of a job, which I'll be out of a job, which means you'll be out of a room and food, understand? Yes, sir. He scratches his ass. Great. And I try to hide my distaste. Um, speaking of food... Breakfast is downstairs. Don't be late if you want to eat before your work. Get your schedule and don't miss the day on the job. And don't bother me! So long then. He waved a short fingered hand and headed off in the hallway. I blinked, only noticing the smell he gave off when he was no longer around. Fresh air! Oh god! For some reason, I felt like this hostel was less friendly work opportunities and more exploiting the labor of young, naive, and stupid people like myself. Did I just get the short end of the deal? I think so. It wasn't like I could do anything about it now. I was stuck here for a semester. I signed papers. Sighing, I went back to my room and get ready for the day. Breakfast was supposed to be included in my living arrangements at the hostel, but it was clear that it wasn't going to be much. And if I didn't hurry, it might not be anything at all. I found my way down to the kitchen, and where the promise of breakfast appeared to be nothing more than a bowl of apples, milk, and cereal, and some sad-looking toast. So oh, that's gross! Also, look at the walls! Oh my god, this is horrible! The toes had been carefully cut into triangles and arranged in a wire rack, each piece separate from each other, to make sure they cooled as fast as possible. Cold toes? Yuck. Well, maybe if I got up early enough in the future, I could snag it while it was still warm. No butter packs, just a tube of spreadable margarine. No grape jelly either, only honey and orange marmalade. Well, that's not that bad, if I'm being honest. I miss New York already. According to the schedule, I still had an hour before my first shift of work actually started. I decided to go check out the pub Danny mentioned. Some people who stayed at the hostel work there, right? So maybe it would be a good place to socialize and meet friends? No pressure. Plus, I think I could drink there. Not that I would, of course, but if I could. But I could if I wanted to do, hypothetically and legally. The Crafty Crown was right next to the hostel, so close that I could see it from my room. Thankfully, it didn't have any obnoxious lights or insanely loud music. I skipped across the stone walkway. Yes, a stone walkway, not concrete, nicely laid out and neat. Geometrically patterned as if someone actually cared about the way it looked when they put it down instead of just their paycheck. In no time, I reached the polished oak door and pushed it open. Okay, lots of alcohol, cool. The inside wasn't nearly as nice looking as the out. Honestly, it was a bit tacky, but it looked clean and there were tables and booths for people to eat at, as well as seats across, across the bar for those who were looking to drink. There was a woman working at the bar and the outfit she wore was rather revealing. It reminded me of the sort of thing you see in the, uh, Boxman wrench? What? Of an o Oktoberfest poster or a Halloween barmaid costume. 
She didn't seem to mind. As far as I could tell, I just hope she wasn't cold. I hesitated in the doorway, unsure whether someone was supposed to see me or if I should see myself. Glancing up, she waved me over. Oh, she's cute! Look at her! I mean, yeah, I can see why she, she might be cold though, but she's cute! Hello, how can I help? She paused in the middle of her sentence, glancing across the room. I followed her gaze to see a slab of beef walking into the pub, so to speak. Slab of beef, really? He had dirty blonde hair, piercing blue eyes, and extremely fit body. The kind of guy you assume to have a six pack just from the way he walked. He eyed her carefully, then across, then crossed the set down next to me. When I turned back to face the bartender, she was gone. Hello there, I don't think we met him, Brandon. No accent, he was American! I'm Jessica, I'm a new boarder at the one. Really? I live there too, what a coincidence! Oh, are you part of the program? Yeah, it seems like the hostel owner and the bar owner are old buddies. Kind of odd that they stayed in business so long together, even odder once you meet them. But it means I have a job, so I'm not upset. <laughs> well, it's good to meet you. The conversation reached a natural lull, and I began to sweat. Making small talk was fine for me, as I usually repeat the same pleasantries with the, each person I met. But as soon as I had to find something to talk about, I panicked and drew a couple of blanks, like right now! It didn't help that he was extremely attractive. I mean, he's okay, I guess. <laughs> and the girl at the bar was too. This wasn't something I was used to dealing with. Not when I was actually open to romance. He smiled and leaned his elbow. I hope you don't mind me saying, but you're rather pretty. <laughs> at least, okay, I'll give him this. At least he wasn't being creepy. Like, hey, you got a boyfriend? You're pretty hot or something like that. You know what I mean? He was just kind of like, I hope you don't mind. I think you're pretty. Like, that's a pretty nice way of saying you think someone's attractive. And at least in my opinion, because when people are like trying to hit on people, especially if they don't want to be hit on, when they say you're hot or like, do you have a boyfriend or anything like that? It's such a turn off and it's like really gross. So at least this guy's kind of being somewhat polite. So I kind of appreciate that. Oh, I flushed and looked away. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed the bartender watching us carefully and wondered why she hadn't come over to service yet. You know, I could get you something if you want sometime. I work here. You do? Yeah, but I'm off duty right now, so you're- So there's only Ashley serving. He motioned to the bartender, and she frowned. She started cleaning a sparkling glass and a, with a rag. As if there were a spot in it, she could see. He leaned next to me. Don't tell people, but she and I used to date. Things have been a bit awkward since then. Oh, so they used to date- Why are you hitting on me in front of her then? That's kind of rude. Oh, that must be uncomfortable. Right? But it's my job. I'd rather much- I'd rather we both had some space, but what can you do? He shrugged. I shrugged. You really couldn't help a situation like that. Anyways, it's about time for my ship, so I should go change. I hope we'll see you around for dinner at some point. Yeah, that'd be cool. He chuckled lightly and got up, walking around the bar and disappearing through the dimly lit hole in the hall. Hey, uh, can I get you anything? I looked up in surprise. Ashley was in front of me and smiling cheerily, the, gl the clean glass in her hand. Um, no thank you. I can't stay. I just wanted to check out this place. I overheard your conversation. I hope you don't mind me saying. I also live at the one. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. If you ever need anything, just ask. You can find me here most of the time. I'm always happy to help. She smiled brightly at me and I found myself blushing again. Right. Well, then, it's about time for me to head off for work, I think. Damn, I wish she was gay! She's not! She's straight, so I can't date her as the female MC, unfortunately. Uh, but she's so cute! <laughs> I stood and began to shovel towards the doorway. Ashley giggled behind me. Have a good day! I, I will! <laughs> I like how the female MC is like more like uh, fumbling with the, uh, Ashley than with Brandon. <laughs> Why are all the people here so attractive? It wasn't about finding someone I might want to date anymore. It was about trying to choose between them. Perhaps I should get to know them first as friends? Yes, you should. You shouldn't always base your first assumptions of a person based on their looks, you know? That's kind of a shallow thing to do. After all, if we live in the same building, I wouldn't want to have a short fling with someone that ended in bad feelings. I'd have to see them around every day. It has to be even worse for Brandon and Ashley if they lived and worked together. Speaking of work, which way is the hotel? Why did she ask? Ashley or something? The hotel was a tall and thin building, a fairly modern looking one, but with some old stone touches to blend into the London environment. Passing through the glass door into the front lobby, I was met with a gentle warmth that wiped away the January gloom. Marble floors gleamed under underfoot, reflecting the chandeliers above. And the decor of plants appeared to be live, not plastic. Uh, a pretty but very bored looking woman was manning the receptionist desk. I approached her. Whoa! Holy crap, she's hot too! 
Damn it, and she's straight! <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Nightingale Hotel. Do you have a reservation? Um, I'm here to work as a maid. I'm from the One Hostel. I'm Jessica. Oh, you. She, re she reached under her desk and pulled out a piece of paper. Yeah, you're going to have to be on ship with Angie, cleaning the upper floors of the hotel today. That's 40 odd rooms, so walk quickly. You need to get everything done by the time your ship ends, or you'll be in trouble. Hey, I don't even know how to clean the rooms, I- Is that my problem? She looked at me with disdain. Yanks, think you deserve everything handed to you. <laughs> Whoa, that's so mean! Why is she so mean? You'll finish your shift in the presidential suite. That one requires a special key. That ke that's kept here in the front desk, so you need to come and get me. The only other person who has access to that suite is the hotel owner. Make sure you get me before your shift is over, or I'll be livid. I don't like waiting for other people to finish their work just so I can leave. Her glare swept up and down my body like a targeting laser. Well, aren't you gonna get going? But to where? The employee room in the back, changing into your uniform and finding Angie. Jeez, at this rate, I should get paid for doing your job. Oh god, now I don't like her. Personality's so like, ugh. Wow, what a bitch. Disgruntled, I followed her outstretched finger to the closet behind the front desk. There was an employee lounge, a few offices and a small locker room. I changed clothes in there and came outside. Oh, it's Angelo. Angelo was waiting for me. There you are, it's about time. Come on, let's go. Angela grabbed a cart next to him and nodded his head to a giant basket. Take that, it's for laundry. I'll go get this one, it's heavier. Thank you, that's kind of you, Angie. It's not my name! Sorry, that's what the lady at the desk called you. Assy, that one. A word of warning, do not trust her. Oh, um, thanks for pushing the cart. Whatever, you're too weak to handle something like this without getting tired. I don't like you, you're sexist! Thanks a lot, dude! That was a little rude. I followed her up to the elevator and punched the number six. Then we were going up. So what exactly do we do in this job? Clean things. I'll show you how to do it, but after that you'll be the one making the beds and dusting and stuff. I will? Why? I don't want to do women's work. I'll pick up the dirty towels and clean the bathroom and vacuum, right? I won't actually clean the sheets though. That's your job. I think it's pretty fair. I bristled. What are you talking about women's work? Do you still live in the dark ages? I didn't know men like you still existed. He frowned at me. What's wrong with it? That's the way things are. You've got, you've got delicate hands, you know. You shouldn't be expecting to do the same thing that, that I do. Oh my god, I can't stand this guy. Who? I I don't think I could like do his route. I don't know. His personality is so like, ugh. What? The elevator ping, disorganizing us into a brittle lit hallway. A few guests were stumbling before the door. We shut our mouths and pushed through the first room. So, right, so what we do is, he hammered onto the door three times. Maid, maid service! Give them a second to respond or put up clothes, you never know. Okay, let's go in. The room was completely empty but incredibly spacious. Two queen-size beds, a television, a desk, a table, and several chains, a dresser, nightstands, refrigerator, sink, microwave. Was this a hotel or an apartment? It certainly put a my hostel room to shame. I shook my head. Angela pushed the cart in and handed me a rag and a squirt bottle. Never squirt directly onto the furniture, on only onto the rag. Get every surface where people would leave fingerprints or dust, but try not to move any of the guests' things except for what's on the bed. I followed him through the room, watching him work. Then he showed me how to achieve the streak-free shine on the mirrors and how to achieve the perfectly crisp bed. Did we not change the streets? Do you know how much water this place would use up if we washed all the linens every day? If you see something obviously dirty, put it in the cart, otherwise make the bed and move on. What about between the guests? Same routine, this place is pretty fancy so we can get away with it. People don't expect a place like this to be dirty so they don't look for it. Actually that's kind of true, like, I, I had a co-worker at my old job who used to work at a hotel and she told me like they would only wash like the sheets or like the comforters once a month. That's it. We wash the sheets every few weeks at minimum anyways. Ew. Wait, when was the last time my sheets were washed at the hostel? I'm washing them as soon as I get home. Angela finished up that room and started on the next one and I began to clean. What are you doing? You left a spot here. You call that a bed, Chris? It looks like a child made it. Why is everyone so mean? Like, this is our first day. You expect us to know everything right away? Jeez. Can you do better than this? You're hardly making this fair for me. Every room we went into, every room we passed, he found something to berate me for. Told you not to move the guest's things. Even when guests were still in the room, he found a way to insult me with his glare and annoyed faces. I wanted more than anything to blow up at him, but I, had, but I held my tongue. 
there was no point to. There's no point to it. I was going to have to work with him, and I didn't want to get rid enough for a bad attitude on my first day. According to James, it would reflect badly on the hostel if he lost his contact. And I'd be out of a job and home. No matter how much of an asshole Angela was, I just had to deal with him. Finally, several hours later, we finished the last of the regular rooms. Right, why don't you just run down and get the presidential key from Asi? Why? Me? Why me? Really? I've been pushing around this heavy cart all day and you can't just ride the elevator down for a few floors? I glared at him, but headed back down to the main lobby. However, when I got to the front desk, Asi was nowhere to be found. There was a single disgruntled guest waiting by and he accosted me as soon as I walked up. I did my best to give him directions to the restaurant. Really, I pointed him in a random direction, but in this city, surely there'd be food anywhere he went. Finally, out of desperation, I went to knock on the door of the owner's office. Hopefully someone would be in. Um, excuse me? Yes? Who are you? I'm Jessica. I'm a new employee here. I need to get into the presidential suite, but I couldn't find Asi to give me the key. She must be helping a guest with something. Fine, fine. I'll go up and unlock the room for you. It'd be nice to get out of this office anyway. Together, the hotel owner and I rode up to the top floor to meet Angelo, his foot tapping impatiently. There you- Oh, my apologies, ma'am. Don't worry, no inspection today. I'll get you out of your hair after this. The bus stuck the key card into the door and opened it up. There, now it's all right. There was just one problem. We forgot to knock. Uh-oh. As soon as the door swung open, we were given a grand view of the room's kingside bed, and there were two people on top of it. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Asi, what are you doing? Oh my god! Asi, what are you doing with? The hotel owner glanced between her and the hotel guests, who were locked in an embrace in the bed. Luckily, they were completely naked, I think. I was trying very, very hard not to look. Ah, see. Well, it, it's definitely not what you think, ma'am. There's a... I believe this is something we should discuss in my office, if you don't mind. I apologize for this disturbance, sir. We get out of your hair right away. If you would like to have your room uh, serviced, the staff here can clean it now and be on the way. Yikes! The, ho the guest nodded n dumbly and the other and the owner left the room to wait on the hallway. As Asi got out of the bed and surreptitiously, uh, what? Straightened her clothes, she glared at me. I told you not to go up to this room without me, didn't I? I told you to come and get me, not the boss, didn't I? Can you just not comprehend a simple orders at all? Or did you think I was joking around with you? I- it didn't seem like- Oh, I wasn't serious enough for you. You didn't take my warning seriously? How I was supposed to know it was a warning when every word out of your mouth sounds like a threat? She headed out of the room, but stopped as she drew level with me. I swear to god, I will make you pay for this. But WHY IS EVERYONE MEAN IN THIS GAME?! Without another word, she left the room. The guest looked from me to Angelo, face pale and as marshmallows. Uh, please sir, don't worry about it. It's just a minor employee feud that will be handled by HR. Angelo stepped in to save me, as I was far too shaken to respond. We'll just get work cleaning, okay? Won't we, Jessica? I nodded, my mouth dry. The room was larger than the rest and took us slightly longer to clean. By the time we were done, my heart was racing a little less. Angelo pushed both his and my cart out of the room, then looked at me. That was a little worrisome. I- I'm just- To my horror, tears filled my eyes. First, Angel berated me the entire day, then I got a hot water with Assy. Angel frowned and approached me. What? He swept me up in a grand hug, and I stiffened, completely confused. Why are you hugging me? There, there, it'll be fine. Don't you worry about it, okay? She won't actually do anything. Assy's all talk, no fight. Once I left something out in the kitchen, and then she ate it and got sick. She hollered until the ghost came home, but never did anything about it. In the kitchen? Wait, she lives at the hostel with us? He pulled away from me and raised an eye eyebrow. Yeah, did she not say this? Oh god! I guess... I just... I guess I must have forgotten. Don't worry, I won't let her bother you. You didn't do anything wrong anyways. Just try to put it out of your head, okay? If anything happens, just holler for me and I'll come get you. Okay, all of a sudden this man is nice! Just... What? <laughs> He grinned, and my heart skipped a beat. What? Why was he suddenly so nice? What happened to the jerk who bossed me around all day? Anyways, let's go. You just gotta do all that laundry before we can get off the shift. Oh, there he was. We finished our work in the basement of the hotel. By the time we came back to the lobby, Asi was once again at the receptionist's desk, helping guests with a bright smile on her face. It was almost as if nothing happened. 
See, she didn't get fired, no harm, no foul. As we passed at the exit, however, she glowered at me. Well, maybe not. Hey, let's go home, Slate. Tomorrow's the first day of classes. You need to rest. Oh, right. Somehow I've taken the control of the events and stopped letting everything just happen to me. Well, I worked my first ship and made my first enemy. But regardless of what happened today, this was still my trip. It was up to me to make the most of it, both good and bad. I could let people get to me like I usually did, or I could stand up on my own with two feet and push through somehow. It's all up to me, and what I wanted to do most right now was... Call my friends at home, get some sleep. Hey, let's talk to our really weird friends. No, actually, do I really want to talk to the weird friends? Because the friends are kind of shitty, if I'm being completely honest. Ah, let's go back to sleep. <laughs> I was going to need all the energy I could get. Day 7. Oh, that's pretty cute animation. The walk back from the university was truly lovely. London was a big city, just like New York City. There were green places here, and there were for everyone to enjoy. A full course load for British students would normally be three courses or modules in a semester. Because of the special working arrangements with the program I was signed up for, I was only taking two. The way I could be sure I have enough study time to keep my grades up. If I fell behind, my student visa would be cancelled and I would be sent home. Not every course was valid for a credit back in the UK, since some were too specific to the British legal or financial structure, but most of them, most of the time education was education. In any case, I had one course in technology and one in literature. Someday soon, I would need to get acquainted with the university library, but for now, I need to get to work. After a hard day of work, finally it was dinner time. The hostel had a dining area where everyone could eat next to the kitchen. People could order in or could gather together and eat a group meal. With that in mind, I crept into the kitchen, hoping to find something simple I could make. Hey, ah, uh, uh, only these two, the girls I like. I don't know about Angela, he's weird. I just don't really like him because his personality is so like... I don't know, like usually I like Sundarais, but him I just don't like. When I entered, I discovered Angelo, Peggy, and Ashley were sitting around the larger table, each taking something from the platter of vegetables and noodles. Whoa, who's this dude? Who's this? <laughs> Another guy I hadn't met before was also there. That must be Mark, the one Danny said was cute. He's cute though, I kinda like him. Can we date him too? What the hell? I really hope you like it, I worked hard on it. It's free food, I definitely like it. You'd make a good wife, Ashley. <laughs> you think so? Ashley flushed as Angelo laughed heartily. You belong together in the Stone Age, Angelo. What? It was a compliment. She's not mad about it. That's beside the point. And that set them both off, shouting insults back and forth. Mark, sitting nearby, watched with wide eyes. I tried to figure out the way to casually approach and join the group, but I wasn't sure what to do. I'd probably look bad if I just walked up and asked something to eat of their food, especially since I didn't help make it. Maybe it would be better to come back later and take a peek in the fridge? I started out of the kitchen, but before I could make it out of the door, I locked eyes with Ashley. Oh, Jessica! Are you hungry? I made stir fry if you want some. I'm sure there's plenty for all of us. Really? Are you okay with that? Of course! Despite Ashley's assurances, I glanced at the others. Peggy and Angela were still at each other's throats, but Mark offered me a smile and gestured to a seat next to me. I- Oh man, I'm- God damn it, my bisexual heart. I kind of like this dude now too. Ah! I sat down nervously. Thank you. It looks really good. Ashley got a plate for me and spooned the food into it, while Mark got me a glass of water. Just can't comprehend the way of your life is totally- Maybe if you calmed down a little, it would be- it wouldn't be so- don't mind them, they've been in at it all day. Really? Yeah, it's a bit rough, but I'm sure they'll both mean well. It's interesting to see people with such dynamic opinions. And you guys aren't going to stop them? I don't really want to get involved, I don't like to fight with anyone. I glanced at Mark, who shrugged. Everything ends one way or another. I mean, these kinds of things are interesting to discuss, but as long as it's not directly affecting me, it doesn't have any meaning. What? What did that mean? <laughs> He's basically like, I don't care. <laughs> There was an odd tension in the air. A few seconds later, I realized Peggy had stopped arguing with Angelo and was instead staring at Mark. How can you say that you don't care about anything that doesn't affect you personally? Does, does that mean if I- Does that mean if you saw someone in pain, you wouldn't do anything to help them because it wasn't you who was hurting? Oh, no, that's not what I meant. I just meant if how someone else is behaving isn't causing them harm directly. Or, if it's just a theoretical concept that isn't harm anyone in practice, then I can see. Bother with it. But theoretical concepts can harm people, I suppose. Well? Mark seemed to consider Peggy's point for a few moments and shrugged. Can't really be bothered. Ugh! 
Peggy stood and grabbed her half full plate. Can't stand people like you! <laughs> she marched off in a hop. Angel chuckled as he watched her go. Thank you for having my back, man. Angel held out his hand for a high five. Mark looked at it interested. Your palm is quite nice, but I wasn't doing it for you. <laughs> I like Mark! I think I'm gonna do Mark first! I'm sorry, I'll do Peggy next, but Jesus, Mark is kind of funny. Eh? It does seem pointless, don't you think? What? I mean, everyone dies. Life is short, so I don't think you should argue so much. It's a waste of time. Angelo grunted and went back to his food. Uh, well, uh, Mark, since you're new here, how do you like it? It is very nice. Everyone is very friendly. Aw, that's sweet. Don't you think, Angelo? Angelo grunted again. He didn't seem particularly interested in the conversation anymore. Well, uh, anyways, what brought you here, Mark? Mark Brown. Uh, exploration. Oh, that's nice! Are you at uni, or did your family send you here? I don't think that's important enough to spend time talking about. He tilted his head to the side and smiled. I don't like people prying into my past if you don't mind. Okay! I can see why people wouldn't like this guy first, because he, he doesn't like to share personally. Uh, but like, I think he's the type of dude, like, if you get to know him, then he'll start being more comfortable. He's kind of like the awkward dude in the group of friends you have. That's kind of how I see him. I set my fork down surprised. Did Mark want everyone to hate him, or was he seriously just accidentally pissing everybody off? I don't think he meant to offend anyone. I think that's just how he is. Like, I, I can deal with those kind of personalities, because I'm just like, that's not that bad. Ashley, her cheeks gone pale from nerves, anxiety, anger, nodded, and picked up her plate. I gotta get clean up now. Uh, it was nice eating with you. Yes, I agree. Thank you so much for your food and conversation. I hope we can do this again. Ashley shot up a puzzled glance. Angelo stood up and handed his plate to Ashley, then lumbered out of the room. But nobody else left. Mark turned to me. So, what brings you here? He seemed almost cheerful, as if he was completely unaware of what he had just done. Um, did you not notice what just happened here? Hmm? What do you mean? <laughs> I feel like he's just like, what are you talking about? Um, let me say first. If I'm gonna offend this dude, because like, if I say like, you insulted everyone, will he get mad and be like, I wasn't offending anyone? Or will he just be like, was it the way I spoke? I feel like maybe I should be honest with this dude. I don't know, you kind of insulted everyone. What? I have not insulted anyone. You made everybody angry and uncomfortable. That's why they left. You were mean. Did you really not see it? I... But I'm not insulting people. That's not what... Is, that is not what's happening. I... Mark frowned and shook his head. I am leaving, yes? I didn't want him to leave! And th then he, like everybody else, took his plate and left. Well, that was a great dinner, wasn't it? Sighing, I finished my food alone. January 8th! Okay guys, we're gonna end this episode of England Exchange. So, I kinda wanna do Mark's route first, just because he's very intriguing. Like, I like Peggy because I like her personality. Um, but Mark is very intriguing to me because I like mysterious characters who don't give off, like, their true personality right away. Kinda, he kinda reminds me, if I were going off, like, the, the dating sim, like, cliche thing. He kind of reminds me of like Jumin from Mystic Messenger. Like he seems like a dick at first but in reality he's not. Like he's very mysterious and stuff. Or he's like uh, Linnaeus from Tr Chess of Blades. Kind of like that kind of personality. So that's why I'm kind of interested in him. So I'm gonna do Mark first and then I'll let you guys vote on uh, the next route even though I said I was gonna do Peggy first. I'm so sorry if you were looking forward to that but the ones I really don't like is Assy and Angelo. Those are the two I don't really like and I'm not sure about Brandon and Danny. They seem kind of like neutral, you know? They're, uh, so I don't know if there's any more characters but we'll see what happens. If there's like any side characters or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, regardless of that, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, let me know in the comments what you think, and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you know when I upload the next episode of England Exchange. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye! <laughs>